fallen angels because they fell from heaven, fell from grace, and fell to earth. And the word Nephilim comes from the Hebrew nephal, which means to fall, hence the fallen ones. Mm. So what, what the scriptures are saying in the Old Testament is that a group of these fallen angels came to earth, they manifested on earth, and they had sex with ordinary human women and produced offspring. And these offsprings were giants. They were the giants of the Old Testament. Goliath, who fought against David, for instance, would, be, would have been a, a progeny of these guys. So what the, the scripture is talking about is these fallen angels coming to earth. Now, I don't like the word angel, Heinrich, because as soon as I mention the word angel, all your listeners out there in Sweden and around the world, they'll be thinking of little naked cherubim with no genitalia and a bone arrow going around trying to shoot somebody in the heart and make them fall in love. Or perhaps they think of some giant big guy with long blonde hair and, you know, 10 meter wings uh, with lights in the background and orchestral music. <laughs> Well, that's not, that's not strictly true. When you get in and study the appearance of angels, in fact, a better translation of the word angel would be ag agent or messenger. That's what it literally means. It's malak in the Old Testament, agalos in, the, in Greek, agalos, hence angel. But we, because of, of religious pictures and stuff down through the centuries, we think of these guys with wings. But every time you look at where these guys appeared in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, they always appeared as men. They look like men, they wear clothes, yep. they eat, they drink, uh, and these guys that manifested on earth could have sexual rela relations with women. Now, what this is, the difference between angels and, and us is, is that we are human beings, we're flesh and blood. These guys are spirit, they're spirit beings. They, they were originally created by God, Yahweh, the Most High God, who is a spirit being. So the, they're, they're not constrained by the ordinary laws of physics as you and I are. These guys can vanish in and out through walls or go from here to this parallel universe, which is called in the Bible heaven, at the blink of an eye. So what the, the scriptures are, are telling us is, is that they look like us. In, actu in fact, I think four times in, the, in Genesis, in the first few chapters of Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image, in the image of God made he man. Several times in the New Testament, we are told that we are made in the image of these God, these gods. And when I say gods now, I'm talking about with a small g. So these, these gods fell to earth, these spirit beings, they look like human beings. I can guarantee you that they are extremely good looking guys because they were originally created by God and he always makes beautiful looking uh, uh, beings. They appeared as supernatural, superhuman, super powerful gods to the ordinary people on earth I believe they were irresistible to the women of that time and they had sexual relations with these women and they produced offspring which were giants. Now this ties in with all the legends of just about every mythology uh, uh, going back to the four corners of the world since time immemorial and of course the whole idea of, of angels coming to earth fits right in with the Greek and Roman mythology and Egyptian mythology which we are aware of uh, in Europe, where it talks about the gods came down from heaven. They lived in Mount Olympus and Delphi. Zeus came down to earth. He took alchemy to wife, a mortal woman, and she almost died giving birth to Hercules. That's where all this stuff comes from. Mm. So what I've done is I've taken the scriptural, biblical information, which has been buried in the Hebrew texts and in the book of Revelation. We'll get into that later on. And put it together so, so to fulfill the whole of the jigsaw puzzle to show exactly who these people were. Some people call them extraterrestrials. Some people call them angel, angels. They're called demons. They're called spirits. What scripture calls them is the Nephilim, the fallen ones. Spirit men who came to earth, had sex with human women, and produced offspring who were giants in size. So what you're talking about and what you're describing here is a kind of a special breed, if you will, then a, a hybrid between angels and human beings in that sense. Uh, uh, <clears throat> d does this to, to you mean that they have been around for a certain period of time and then, and then vanished? Or do you still believe that they're hanging around, a few of them, potentially? Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. Now, th these, one, these fallen angels, by the way, these guys are part of a group that rebelled with the head of the, uh, their leader, who has several names in scripture. He's called Lucifer, he's called Satan, he's called the devil, he's called the prince of darkness, he's called the prince of the power of the air, he's called Bel, he's called Baal, he's called the god of this world, 
is several different names. The, the devil. He's called the dragon. He's called the serpent. He's lots of different handles. He's the leader. And according to the Old Testament, at one time he tried to usurp the throne of the Most High God. He, he had a, a military coup, as it were, but he failed in his bid uh, and he was defeated. And we're told that when he fell, he brought a third of the rest of the angels with him. So it was just a small group of these guys that fell to earth at that time. According to the book of Enoch, 200 of these guys manifested on, the, on earth. We're told they, they left their first estate, which is to sort of parallel universe, as I say, called heaven. They came to earth and they can't go back there. Now, there was just 200 of these guys. Now, they were knocking around, according to my studies, for the best part of a thousand years because we're told in the book of Enoch, by the way, the book of Enoch is not in the Bible, but yes. Enoch he is directly quoted by Jude in the New Testament. And Jude was uh, one of Jesus Christ's brothers, his younger brother who wrote this, um, one of the sons of Mary and Joseph. And he quotes directly from the book of Jude or from the book of Enoch. So that means that it gives a lot of credence to the book of Enoch. And he says 200 of these guys fell to wert, had sex with the ordinary women, and they produced these giants. Now, this happened in the days of Jared, which is about 1,200. He was born about 1,200 years prior to the flood of Noah. So we're told in Genesis then that in the preceding 1,000 years or so, when these gods were on earth, and I call them gods, as I say, with a small g, because these are the gods of Greece, the gods of Rome, the gods of Egypt, the gods of Mesopotamia, the gods of China and the Far East, same thing, avatars, they call them over there. And an avatar in Hindi means he who comes from earth to heaven, or from heaven to earth, excuse me. And that's, of course, in their legends over there about gods coming down and having sex with, uh, with mortal people and producing demigods. So we're told in Genesis that over the, over the period of the next thousand years that these guys infected or afflicted the whole population of the world with their DNA. And we're told that the, the whole of the earth became extremely violent. There was bloodshed in the whole earth. There was violence. It says there was only evil in man's heart continually. That's how bad it was. And if you read Greek and Roman and Egyptian mythology or go to Egypt, you'll see that it's all about blood. There's patricide, fratricide, matricide. They were killing one another. They were eat, drinking one another's blood. There was a lot of evil going on in the earth at that time. So by the end of the thousand years, uh, Yahweh, the Most High God, more or less said, I've had enough of this. It, it said it grieved him that he had made man on the earth. And he sent the flood of Noah. And he drowned everybody, all the human race, was drowned at that time, which may have been 20 or 30 million people. Uh, we're told that the progeny of these guys were drowned, all the giants, because they were the hybrids of human flesh and blood and spirit beings, as you correctly pointed out. But you cannot drown spirit men. You can't drown these spirits because they're spirit beings. And we're told that these uh, spirit beings, these fallen angels, these Nephilim, who caused the sin in the days of Noah, were told that they are locked up. They are incarcerated in, a, in this place which called in Scripture, it's called the bottomless pit, it's called the abyss, and once in the epistle of Peter, it's called Tartarus or Tartarus. And of course, Tartarus ties in with these gods with the Greek and Roman mythology where we're told that the gods are imprisoned in Tartarus because they rebelled against Zeus. And it also fits in with the abode of the dead, the underworld, or the netherworld of Egyptian mythology, where we're told again that the gods are imprisoned in the netherworld, in the underworld. That's where you go, and you've got to cross the river Styx to get to the underworld, and Hades is the keeper of the underworld, etc., etc. Mm. So the, the scriptural information ties in with the biblical accounts, and that's how we get the full picture. So the original 200 angels, these fallen angels who fell to earth, and caused all this sin and violence in those days, and had sex with women, are locked up in this subterranean prison called the, the Abyss or Tartarus. But in the future, in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 9, these guys are going to be released onto the earth again. Uh, and it even tells us the name of the leader of these guys. And it, this fits in with the, the name that's given to him in the book of Enoch. His name is Azazel. And that Azazel pops up in Deuteronomy, uh, or, or rather Leviticus in the Old Testament, chapter 17, I believe, where his name is mentioned three times, but it's, it's translated there as scapegoat, 
where the scapegoat was sent out with the sins of the, the people into the desert. But the, in the original Hebrew, his name is Azazel, which is a proper name. Hmm. So that's where these guys are locked up and they are going to reappear out of this place in the future. We'll get on to that later on. By the way, there was a second eruption 